in what we're looking for though, and this is back to my lab a little bit more, is how do we, when, when people do the traditional academic exercise, we get pure substrates, nice sugars, we ferment them and we come up with these nice chemicals, we start a business plan and we try to move out. The reality is, in the real world, it's not quite like that. We have paper, we have bales of hay, we have real feedstocks. And the problem is we have lower production rate, we get rapid mass growth, again, this is your fermentation, the morphology, inhibitors from biomass pigments, so there's a lot of complications. Those inhibitors become very important. Um, so where the application side of it is very important for bioconversion is we need to work on separation efficiency. We need to, how to learn how to sort these different molecules and there's some applications there. Also biocatalysis. We can't just have free floating enzymes in a solution. It gets too hard to separate things. So we get into, again if you're looking at fuels, they're, non, they're hydrophobic, they don't want to be in water. We end up with two phase systems. We also want to look at immobilized enzymes, again to increase the activity of lifetime stability as well. Sorry, online sensor control. It is really important to control these processes and get them into a continuous mode. Uh, some of the things we've been doing in our lab is looking at separation of hydrolyzed sugars from microbial inhibitors. Again, this is a core function in the lignocellulosic world. How do you break down biomass and get fermentable sugar away from the furfurols and other things that are found in lignin and other major component of plant biomass? We want to retain our biocatalysis and we want to be able to sort these monosaccharides and disaccharides from larger structures. Um, and just to, what we look at is trying to get continuous nanomembrane bioreactors. Um, and when, once what's happened in the last five years is the membrane technologies have now allowed us to transcend past the traditional filtering into actually molecular sorting, if you wanted to coin a new phrase. We can actually, in our lab, and we've got some papers out and some patents pending, that we're starting to sort monosaccharides, that's like glucose, away from even disaccharides like lactose. Um, and so what we've done is we've constructed these bioreactors uh, that are continuous systems where you have the fermentation reaction going on, um, then you bring it across a nanomembrane system um, and sort the different molecules. You can send recycle streams which allow you to optimize your process. Um, and again, there's a lot of research in our lab working with membranes provided by like Koch and Film Tech. Again, unfortunately these are big multinationals, but those are the big players right now on the nanomembrane uh, on the commercial side. Um, and this is what the system looks like. These are very high pressure systems, much or two orders of magnitude higher than an ultra filtration system. Uh, but to make them work, we need to get very extensive control modules, which for us right now are problematic. Building these things that are pressure regulators, stopping what we get is polarization across the membrane if you're not careful in regulating your pressure and flows. What that means basically is you're clogging your membrane. Um, and so what we can do is we can track, I, this is just in for the record, but what we can do is set it up so that we can actually, this is showing separation of glucose and galactose away from lactose in a, in a, in a, in a lifetime, but we've put online uh, rec uh, monitoring systems like polarimetry, believe it or not, actually works really well in the sugar world. Uh, again, some more uh, IP around that. But this is a, a quick picture of some nanomembranes. You can see these are small. Uh, the very small nano, uh, nanoscale orifices that are separating the molecules and what we see is before and after they do tend to still plug up a little bit on us so this is one of the major problems with applying membranes in the, in the functional world however with the systems that we're doing we're getting very good lifespan with them I can't go into a lot of details unfortunately right now um, but on the other side of that is getting a mobilized biocatalyst into our reactor systems and we're working with Lennon Katz, again this is a, a European company, uh, studying how we immobilize the, the enzymes in this type of bead. This is a bead that you can see, it's about five millimeters in diameter. Um, and these are the ones that they made, these are the ones we've made, they've basically given us their technology to use and apply. However, what we see is if you go right in, and again, this is looking at some electron microscopy, you tend to see if you look at a bead, a cross section, you have areas of high density of protein, which is the enzyme, and other areas that are not high density. And what that means is we're not getting optimal distribution of our biocatalyst, even now with standard industrial technology. So again, we're talking with some collaborators at NIN looking at how we may build different uh, mobilized systems um, to approach this problem. So, sorry for the 100 mile an hour tour, but keeping an academic to 15 plus minutes uh, is always an exercise. Um, but again, I'd like to give thanks to all our, our funders, everything from NSERC, uh, Alberta Agricultural Research Institute, Barley Commission, Novozymes, uh, Syngenta, Lenicats, CFI, um, and thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. 
Um, okay, the, the question on, on what kind of sensors would be uh, applicable to this type of uh, activities, there's actually a lot of room for application there, um, both on pressure sensors, temperature uh, sensors, uh, but specifically when we get into if we can monitor individual molecules in a live running continuous process, it becomes very valuable to us in, in the reactor design world. Um, a lot of these, these re um, reactors, to compete with the non-traditional, there is, you've got a expense is equal to, our time is equal to expense. If we can monitor exactly the point to cut things off or recycle them, it becomes, it, it, it increases the efficiency of the overall industrial process quite a bit. Um, so that is definitely, the, the sensor on especially organics um, and being able to sort individual organic molecules on a sensor level is, is really important. Thanks.